Representative Lauren Bober, one of my favorites. When she ran for Congress, she said she would be a huge Second Amendment advocate. She also said that if she were to go to Washington, D.C., that she would carry her Glock wherever she goes, up to and including on the floor of the House. Well, that's what she did. She went to Washington and went to carry her Glock, and then all of a sudden Pelosi had some other ideas. I'm rooting for you, Lauren. All of us are. We need more Second Amendment advocates. And we need more women into guns. I mean, really, who doesn't love a Glock girl? As far as that goes, who cares what brand she carries? Who doesn't love a gun girl, period? So let's talk about my favorite new congresswoman, Lauren Boebert from Colorado. Yes, love her. So I did a video on her that happened on the 6th, and it was awesome. Like, she was just totally passionate. So if anyone hasn't seen that video, make sure you go check it out. And she's kind of being pretty cool again. She's just pissed off Pelosi. Did you hear about that? A little bit, yeah. This was today, right? This was just in the last couple days when they started the impeachment hearing. So this is a new article from today. And it says, Rep. Boebert clashes with police after setting off metal detector in Capitol building. I wonder why. Well, when she ran for Congress, she did some of her campaign ads that literally said, if I get elected to the United States Congress, I'm going to carry my Glock like everywhere in Washington, D.C., including on the House floor when I'm voting. Yeah, I saw I saw stuff about her when she was campaigning, and I and I thought that it was really cool that she was speaking out for the Second Amendment. I was rooting for her, so I'm really happy that she got in there. So basically, what happened is is Pelosi and all of them have been giving her a hard time. They're fear mongering like they always are, even though I'm sure she's a perfectly safe person. And all of a sudden, these metal detectors appeared when they were coming in trying to debate and vote on the recent impeachment. And my understanding is the metal detectors were not there before, correct? This is a right. new thing. Yeah, this is unprecedented. As far as I know, they've never had them to enter the House chambers. And these are for their staff and even the members themselves, the actual congressmen, right? Right. Another Pelosi stunt, indeed. Yeah. So basically, she went to walk through the metal detector and it was set off. And we can see right here where she's talking to Capitol Police as she's trying to get through. She set it off and they blocked her from coming into the chamber where she was supposed to be in there to vote. So let me ask you this. Are they, are they allowed to carry guns in there? Yes. This is kind of one of those where they make their own rules, right? So regular people like you and I cannot carry in the Capitol building like this. And in fact, unless you live there, and have a resident permit, basically nobody can carry a gun in Washington, D.C. However, they carved out a provision in the law for themselves where sitting members of Congress can carry anywhere in the whole city. Okay. Now, here's what's happened. Just in the last few days since the events at the Capitol, the former sergeant at arms and the head of the Capitol Police both resigned. There's new people that just got sworn in within the past week and basically Pelosi ordered them to say, nope, we're not allowing anyone through unless they can go through this metal detector, right? But that's not a written rule. That's just a Pelosi theatric. Yes. And from what I understand, they've not changed anything. So the law still states that she can carry anywhere in D.C., including in the House chamber. Pelosi's telling her you can only carry it in your office. And she had the Capitol Police tell Bobert and other members that they can only keep their pistol in their office. I see. And she's saying, no, I'm going to carry my pistol wherever I want because first of all, it's legal. Second of all, you know, that she, she just said that basically this added security measure is just another political stunt yep. by Pelosi. And after she was blocked, she tweeted and said, I am legally permitted to carry my firearm in Washington, D.C. and within the Capitol complex. This girl's a firecracker. I'm loving her so far. So am I. She's an advocate for we the people, it seems like, but also for the Second Amendment. And she's literally just standing right up and saying, I'm going to carry my handgun wherever I want. And she's advocating for gun rights all across America. 
And she's a female. She's a petite female. And she's in there pushing back for the Second Amendment. And I just give her so much credit on that. Oh, I know. Look at her. So we see her right here where they're blocking her from getting in. Here's in another picture of her walking <laughs> down the hall next to this man. She's so petite. But you know what I think is encouraging about her? We need more strong people in office that'll stand up for we the people. And if it takes a strong woman, regardless if she's 100 pounds soaking wet, she's she's like a little powerhouse, like a firecracker. Absolutely. And I, I seriously look up to her. Now, this is not going unnoticed by the Democrats. They're literally condemning her. There's also a lot of them saying that they want her to be removed from office already, even though she just got in. She's basically saying she's not even thinking about getting out of office. She just got elected, and she's looking to serve the people of Colorado that elected her, which I think is awesome. What I like about her is because she is a female, and you know when they when they do the two A arguments and the gun grabbers, it's they they kind of try to depict like this bloodthirsty savage man, and then you see her, and she's kind of going against the narrative just by being who she is. And so I think that she's great for the 2A movement. I love her. I do too, because these rights belong to all of us and we need to make it mainstream where it's not just the 40 to 70 year old man that's a member of a hunting club and all that. No, right. everybody wants to carry a gun. Right. I and mean, look at you. Exactly. I, I, I see myself in her. I mean, I just, I actually love this woman. I see myself in her and I think that a strong woman carrying her Glock every day, I think that she can move mountains in the 2A community. And I'm just so happy that she's in there on, on the floor uh, fighting for us. Oh, I am too. I'm like seriously one of her biggest fans instantly. Yeah. I mean, I just love Glock girls, period. That's what you said a minute ago. I said, well, what do you think of Lauren Boebert? You're like, well, duh, I'm a Glock girl, too. Hello. We're <laughs> Glock girls. We stick together. I like Glock girls. Yeah. I have good taste, though. Yeah, <laughs> you do. But and yeah, I would, I'm going to be rooting for her. I'm, I'm really rooting for her. So would I. And I want to also give kudos to these guys. These are true Second Amendment supporters, too. Um, representatives Chip Roy of Texas and Thomas Massey of Kentucky, they just breezed right through the metal detectors. They blinked red, but they just kept walking. That's great. Like they didn't even care. That's great. Yeah, she's on their radar because that speech she gave on January 6th. Yes, which was an awesome speech. And that's why I made a video about it. Yeah, that speech gave me chills. That was amazing. Yep. Now this is still basically breaking news, but... From what I understand, they wouldn't let her in, literally, because she set the metal detector off. But then later on, she was allowed to actually enter the House chambers to cast her vote under undisclosed circumstances. So maybe there'll be a follow-up. Maybe she just said, screw it, and just they let her in with it. Hopefully, they didn't disarm her, but I guess we'll find out, right? I think there's going to be a lot of follow-up. I think she's going to make a lot of noise in there, and I can't wait. Yeah, and I think I'm going to look forward to doing more videos on her in the year to come because I think those are going to be encouraging, fun videos for people to watch. Yep, I'm with you. And we need to get more people like her in office because there's a lot of hope, and I'm glad to see people like her that are giving us some. Yep. So right as soon as we were done recording the part you just watched, Tap Rock and Roll sent me a text, and it has a statement that was just put out by Pelosi. And this is Pelosi's statement announcing rule change, mandating fines for re refusing to follow new chamber security screening protocols. Washington, D.C. Speaker Nancy Pelosi today announced that we're when returning to session on January 21, the House will vote on a rule change mandating fines for members who refuse to follow new screening protocols for House chamber. On behalf of the House, I express my deepest gratitude to the U.S. Capitol Police for the valor they showed during the deadly insurrection on the Capitol as they protected the lives of the staff and Congress. Sadly, just days later, many House Republicans have disrespected our heroes by verbally abusing them and refusing to adhere to basic precautions to keep members of our congressional community, including the Capitol Police, safe. The House will soon move forward with a rule change, imposing fines on those who refuse to abide by these protections. The fine for the first offense will be $5,000 and $10,000 for the second offense. The fines will be deducted directly from members' members' salaries. 
by the chief administrative officer. It is tragic that this step is necessary, but the chamber of the people's house must and will be safe. So let's see what happens. There's several members that are very pro Second Amendment and that have insisted they're going to carry wherever they want in the Capitol. I have a feeling there'll be follow-ups on this later, and we'll catch up to you guys then. All right, thanks for watching, and have a good one. <laughs>